This is a live well talk on clean air and surface pathogen reduction, or CASPER. I'm Dr. Dustin Arnold, Chief Medical Officer at Unity Point Health, St. Luke's Hospital. St. Luke's recently has installed the CASPER system, which is a, a no-touch disinfection technology, works without an operator, and provides around-the-clock disinfection. Joining me to discuss the science uh, behind this product is Christoph Sushi, co-founder and president of Casper Group. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, when I first heard about this, uh, that it was hydrogen peroxide based, uh, at first I was like, does that work? You know, I read about it and I was like, oh, it does, you know. Uh, and, and so it's pretty, pretty neat technology. Well, just give us a basic overview of how it works. And I appreciate that. Well, first of all, hydrogen peroxide, well, we know it works, right? Right. Been using it in the hospital for quite a long time now. But what we do, basically, we use a photocatalytic system. It's, it's complicated, but uh, simple to use. You put it in the uh, air conditioning system, the HVAC ventilation, and what it's going to do, it's going to harvest the humidity and oxygen from the air, going to change those energy levels of the molecule to produce low levels of gaseous hydrogen peroxide. And it's pretty much what you're going to find outdoors uh, on a sunny day, not during rush hour, but in, you know, in the mountains or by the lake. Uh, and it's going to disinfect continuously. 24-7, not only the air, but also all the surfaces that it touches. And of course, it's like the air outside, so it's, uh, it's fairly safe. We've been surviving it for 1.8 million years, I think. Yeah. Pretty consistently. <laughs> yeah, it's worked so far. Yeah, so far. I mean, we, we've, we've known that radicals and hydrogen peroxide are uh, effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we know that. I mean, we know that, um, that Cellular changes can happen when you have radicals interact with the, that. How, how, how did you arrive to think that this, this, this might be a good idea? How, do, how did that come about? I wish I could say the idea is completely mine, uh, but not really. We actually look at what NASA was doing. I, serve for, I, I really suffer from allergies. Uh, so there was kind of a self-project. I was in real estate at that time 18 years ago in Spain and was trying to find a way basically to get cleaner air inside my house, but tried filtration. Filtration's okay, but it's only gonna trap what goes to the filter, so it's kind of passive. And lived in a very nice forest pine tree. Uh, it's great until March arrives, and then, then it's nightmare for me. <laughs> Starts crying, red eyes, it's pretty bad. Uh, so I was looking at how can we purify the air and add something to the filtration level. And NASA was using a photocatalytic system. They still use it, actually. It's, it's basic. It's titanium dioxide and UVC, which is going to actually uh, release kind of a purifying plasma, but that stays inside the cell. It's very short-lived. Uh, so it's a great filtration system. It doesn't do much more than that. So we look at that. Okay, how can we make it better? How can we actually generate something? We needed more energy to actually be able to change that energy level of that molecule of water and produce H2O, uh, H2O2 from H2O, uh, so hydrogen peroxide. And it took us some years, quite a few, <laughs> but we got there. Uh, and immediately I felt the difference. I mean, I, I could get into my house during March, April month and feel completely different. Then I thought maybe it's me. <laughs> so I started you know, installing everywhere else. We, uh, and everybody noticed the, the difference. Now we went to labs, we installed it in, uh, Cold storage is so food industry was our first uh, market. And we showed that we actually extended the shelf life of produce, fresh produce. We made the meat preparation plants safer, salmon preparation plants, Coca-Cola became a big customer. Uh, and then the first SARS about 15 years ago hit. Uh, so we expanded into Asia. And about five years ago, I uh, said, like, okay, it's time to get into North America. So I moved to the US. Um, and then I was convinced by, uh, our two partners now, uh, to look into healthcare, which I was kind of against because it's complicated. However, I said, listen, you did that for one reason. It's kind of help people live better, yourself first, but then other people. I said, look at healthcare. You know, there's a lot of issues uh, that we, we know we're not doing enough by filtration. We know we don't have time. EVA staff don't have time to clean properly a room. And even if they had, it's, it's impossible to clean 100% of the surfaces. So. How can we add another level of protection behind the scene, no touch, no human interaction that would worth work 24-7 around the clock, as you said, and continuously disinfect air and surfaces? Um, so we raised uh, quite a bit of money, private investors in the U.S., 
and come up with a new version that we call the Casper Medic, specifically for hospitals, healthcare industry. Uh, that's about 30 times more powerful than the old one. Uh, and here we are. And you mentioned that it, it harvests the humidity and mm -hmm. the oxygen that's oxygen, in the air, yeah. creates hydrogen peroxide. So it's not like there's a tank you got to go fill up with hydrogen peroxide, right? I mean, so it's doing that. Yeah. Was it serendipitous that it worked against uh, viruses? Or, or did you have a pretty good knowledge that you're going to uh, be, I mean, for example, food preparation, you mentioned that viruses don't infect bananas, but bacteria does, right? You know? Correct. And mold. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so, so and, and fungi, you know, mold. Mm -hmm. uh, but viruses uh, are unique yeah. species and uh, a unique kingdom, actually. Uh, so w was that serendipitous or did, did we was just get lucky or did you have a hunch that, yeah, this might work on the viruses? Well, I don't know if we got lucky. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, we knew H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, would work against viruses. Um, we know we don't kill the virus uh, unless the bacteria, and it's actually, it's very interesting at a microscopic level. It's not a, a chemical attack against the bacteria or mold spore. It's a physical attack. It's going to create some pumps, proton pumps. Uh, it's going to dry the membrane of the bacteria and just, just kill it. Viruses, well, not so much. Uh, their membrane is kind of like our skin. You can put a bottle of hydrogen peroxide on your ar arm, nothing's going to happen, right? Unless you got a cut. But what we do, we, we're going to deactivate the virus. So all those receptors that are used by the virus to infect another cell, it's just going to be burnt. It's protein chains. They're going to be oxidized by hydrogen peroxide. And that virus just going to die from a peaceful death eventually, uh, not being able to reproduce, not being able to infect, but inactive. And it's, I mean, so far it's worked on a, a lot of viruses that we've tested against, uh, H1N1, flu. I know we did a study here actually on uh, absenteeism from one year to another, and I believe we reduced it by 46%. Somewhere around there, yeah, uh, correct. On the sixth floor, which is, which is awesome. Uh, that's, that's the kind of things that help us sleep at night, although right now we don't have much time to sleep. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that, you sleep better. No, I think, it, I think it's important to illustrate that this decision to go with this system was made well before COVID-19. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, was, is, uh, this is probably two years ago, I can remember, we talking about this. We met Lori at uh, the APIC conference in, where was it the first one? It was two years ago. At I can't least, remember yeah. where it was, yeah. but that was that's, two that's, years ago. And Lori Townsend, our infectious control nurse, right? Correct. Yeah. And she was uh, very, very pushy. She said, listen, we learned about you. We're really interested in doing something uh, at uh, Unity Point at St. Luke's, and we'd like for you to come. So, of course, it took time, you know, study the concept, the, uh, the floor plans and everything with the team. And, and then we started, we did the first study, the first install on the sixth floor about a year ago, a little right. bit over a year ago. Uh, that's where we got those stats. Um, and then COVID hit and uh, uh, Scott and Laurie Townsend right. uh, called and said, well, I think it's, we want you to accelerate the, uh, the installation, which was planned for June. Uh, right, moved it up a couple months. Exactly. Right? I said, we, we want you now. And, and because she's, she's actually such a wonderful person and such an advocate, we said, well, there's not, we can't say no to Lori Townsend anyway. <laughs> so, that is difficult. So She's we, persistent. She is. She is. When she wants something, yeah, she will let yeah, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I think uh, acknowledgement of your company's willingness to, to move up that timeline was of great benefit. And uh, I'm always impressed with... Uh, some of the vendors we've had, whether it was the flood in 2008 uh, or that how, how that they've rose to the occasion and helped us get our mission done and taking care of people. Are we the first hospital? Are there other hospitals that have this? I wish I could say you're the first, but no. <laughs> yeah, you have other hospitals uh, in the U.S., but around the world as well. Uh, in the U.S., quite a few right now. And of course, since COVID happened, a new crisis, right, airports, right. Uh, stadiums, schools, office buildings, restaurants, uh, trains, buses, you name it. That's interesting for, you know, mass transit obviously had to influence the spread, particularly in New York when you compare it to like Los, uh, Los Angeles. So that, that, right. is, that is fascinating. Uh, and it makes sense. I mean, like I said, when I first read, heard about it, I was like, no, that can't work. Then I, then I read about it and said, wow, okay, this totally makes sense. Um, and it was really exciting because of the, the consistency. The, yeah. the, it, because you're right, even the, the best uh, environmental service technician, and we have some five-star people, 
cleaning one room to the next, the ability to make sure you get everything is, is impossible. It's it's human error. It's, yeah, it's just impossible. You, you can't. No. You, you just you just can't be consistent like this Correct. system can, which is fascinating. And we did not have any employees, doctors, nurses, technicians, acquire COVID and be hospitalized. So, you, and we had no record either of a patient showing up, being negative, and then being positive. So. Uh, now, part of that was the testing wasn't as robust early on as now, so that, that could have been missed in that. I'll be, admit that. But this could be a reflection of the practices that we had in place to protect not only the patient and the staff. Yeah. And I, I, I see it, you know, as, as in the hospitals all the time, uh, you see the difference between one place and the other. Uh, quite impressed by the quality of the people you have here. Honestly. Oh, thank you. Uh, especially in the uh, emergency department. I was there at the beginning of the of, of the crisis of this new crisis, and it was a little bit unsettling, but uh, you're surrounded by a bunch of very very good professionals, so that that was good to see. Uh, however, just we're publishing a paper, I believe this month July, we did another hospital in Oklahoma where we showed a reduction of uh, hospital acquired infection by fifty four percent, I believe fifty two or forty fifty four percent. Just on the side story, our goal when we launched the company, Gasper in the U.S., was to reduce those uh, hospital-acquired infection by 5 to 7%. 7 was the big, hairy goal. So, okay, if we get 7%, we could save, on paper, 7,000 lives per year. That's a, good, that, that's a good goal. 54% for one hospital is pretty awesome. Yeah, um, absolutely. No, so if we, keep going, if we can do that consistently, I think that's going to change a, a lot of things in in that area. Yeah. And, and I think I should note that I also used to run the wound care clinic. You know, we tell patients don't dump hydrogen peroxide on that. And so this is not the level of hydrogen peroxide that by dumping on a wound that prevents a wound from healing, Correct. Um, it, it'll clean the wound, but it won't allow it to heal. And so, so I think that's important to make that note. Cause I know there's people listening that are going to challenge me on that. Cause you know, like I say, you yeah. told us never put hydrogen peroxide on we're, stuff. And so I want to, we're not, get, not get all going to turn blonde. Right. 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 <laughs> it's it's going to be okay. Right. It, that this is this is exciting and it, it makes sense and you know this is uh, this is this is really great information. Uh, I'm glad we got to sit down today and talk about it. Thank you so much for taking time to talk about this. Again, that was Christoph Sushi, uh, co-founder and president of Casper Group. Thank you for listening to Live Well Talk on. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to spread the word, please give us a five star review and tell your family, friends, neighbors, strangers about our podcast. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, be well.